Hello, everyone. Today's shirt is Burt Macklin, FBI. Any of you guys ever watch Parks and Recreation? We got Janet Snakehole here, too. So good stuff. Good stuff. So I just had a call from a student, um, and uh, she raised a very, very good point that I really should have addressed last time. Um, the due date for the Jump the Shark paper. We're going to go with a two-page draft. I think that's what it says on the syllabus. I'll go double check. But if it's supposed to be four pages, I won't raise it. We'll keep it at two. Two pages for the draft. Now, normally in the face-to-face -face classes, I do a really big portfolio, which is filled with things like focused free writes and smaller assignments. And they have to turn in this giant portfolio. Really, the thing that's going to supply that for us in the 1101 class is the discussions. The uh, students in the face-to-face -face class don't have to do all these discussions after every lecture, right? They usually just work on the paper and they have these other things that they do alongside it. So that's kind of how that's going to work. But well, the question that the student asked was, um, do we talk about multiple jump the shark moments? And the answer to that is, well, you know, I don't like to talk about things in terms of right or wrong. I like to talk about things in terms of what's strong and what's more difficult, right? One of the big things that most people need to learn as writers is um, how to make things easier for yourself, how to structure your process so that you're not piling on more and more and more stuff like in the last few minutes. This paper is going to be a lot easier to execute properly if you choose one jump the shark moment. Now, for a lot of you guys, you're thinking, that's that's how am I going to do that? Your first instinct is to pile up a lot of jump the shark moments and could just kind of sort of like um just kind of throw everything you've got at the paper. That's not the best strategy because when you do that, you completely leave out the possibility for detail and development. You're never going to really get deep into the trenches on an idea. You're just, they're all going to be very, very surface. So what I want from you on this is something that has a lot more um, analysis. I want you to actually like unpack this thing and try to get as much material from it as you can. Now, the good news is, is today's lecture is going to kind of teach you how to do that. Um, the Jump the Shark paper is very much um, focused upon argumentation. And I've done this in a way that it kind of sneaks in a little bit, right? Argumentation, when we actually talk about argument, can be a very, um, can be a very kind of, uh, well, I don't know why I'm so woozy this morning, is, is Wednesday. It's very, very Wednesday. Wednesdays just, I don't know what it is about Wednesdays. They just feel very, very doldrum to me. And it's just, I feel like I'm underwater right now. But in any case, um, argumentation and arguments are something that we kind of get bogged down in when we talk about this, like in, a, in an English class. So like what's happening here with the jump the shark idea? You are essentially, and this was actually in response to another comment from another student, you are essentially basing all of this on your opinion. There is no way to definitively mark a jump the shark moment for a show, a video game, a point in history, a civilization. These are all things that people argue about and they offer up different suggestions, right? And because it's based upon your opinion, there's really no way that you could be wrong because it's subjective. It, it really depends so much on your attitude and your you know thoughts about what it is you're discussing. So if you wanted to say that Parks and Recreation jumped the shark when little Sebastian died, I know I'm, I'm getting into the weeds, it, I can immediately come and say, no, it was after the snake juice episode because it was never, ever, ever going to be funnier than that. And they actually like um, had such a good episode that it was all downhill from there. So no matter what, if you're working with argumentation, someone can come and disagree with you. And typically, they can find ways to disagree with you in some pretty convincing ways. That's not the that's nothing to worry about. We decide upon our position and we defend it. So argumentation, um, it's not about having a fight. It's about having a claim. 
having some type of um, you know stance on an issue. You don't need another person in order to experiment with argumentation. Now, argumentation, I'm going to get a little writing nerdy for a little bit because I'm an English instructor. It's what I do. What are you, what are you going to do about it? Aren't right, you going to complain? Please don't. Um, <laughs> but in any case, writing is something that we call a mode of discourse. All writing is going to participate in one of the five modes. And typically, early in my English classes, I like to talk about the modes to differentiate them from, the, from each other, but also show you how to combine and rejigger them and stuff like that. But in all honesty, um, I wanted to kind of flip it on its head a bit and talk more about argumentation first. Argumentation is definitely the one that I work with the most. So you'll see narrative, you'll see description, you'll see um, exposition and definition. All those things will come into. But for right now, this is primarily an argumentative task, right? We are proving or we are trying to justify our position of when these jump the shark moments occur. Now, with argumentation, there are actually three appeals that you can make to try to convince someone to see your stance on an issue. Now, I think that we can use these appeals to try to find ways to of making our jump the shark paper more convincing. But let's try to stop and think about different ways that we can do that. So if you're writing an argument, and all of this is stuff that you should add to your toolbox. You know, this is stuff that um, you should think about when you're writing the paper, a smaller cohesive units that you can sort of build upon to kind of like assemble your ideas to build something that's longer. So there are three main argumentative appeals that we use, and they're as follows. I could use their big fancy Greek names, but I don't feel like talking Greek this morning. Um, the first is logic. Now, I love asking this question in my face-to-face -face classes because I love the look on students' faces when I ask them to define logic. What is logic? Most people don't have a firm grasp on this. They don't understand how to identify or use logic. It doesn't mean that you don't think logically. It just means that you don't really understand that that's what you're doing. There's a lot of stuff in our life that we take for granted. And there's, there's a lot of words that we use. We understand their meaning in terms of how we use them, right? And when you stop and think about language in more detailed terms beyond how you use it in conversation, things get really, really hard to understand because we don't understand those definitions in terms of how they actually work only in the way that we use them in conversation. So defining logic, man, that's a heavy, heavy, heavy demand for a Wednesday morning. But here we go. Logic approaches things without emotion, right? Emotion is intuition, gut feelings. Logic doesn't do that. Logic tries to take a calm approach and really um, gather sensory data, gather evidence to present a case for what I would call common reason, right? Your reason is how you kind of think and make us and make decisions. So like logically, if there is, I'm trying to think of, again, this is actually really difficult to do in the middle of a Wednesday morning, but if I'm trying to think logically about something, I'm cutting out the emotion from it, right? So like, I mean, I'm going to say the drug problem. We've got a lot of drugs. Narcotics are constantly in the news and it's very easy for us to panic and to think about like, we need to arrest everybody who's, who's dealing it. We need to do this, this, and this, and this. But if we think about it logically, and we throw out all of the emotion from it, we might end up with a different response to the drug problem. We might look at it in terms of treatment for people who are addicted to drugs, right? To think of them not as you know criminals who are coming to destroy everything that we hold dear, but as people who have problems, people who are you know addicted to a substance, 
need some type of support in order to become more functioning members of society rather than incarcerating them. Now, I'm not saying that this is right, right? I'm not saying that this is how we solve the drug problem. This is a logical way of thinking about it. And there, somebody could come along and disagree with my logic, right? They might see it in a different way, as long as it's trying to be non-emotional. And that can be actually really hard to do. So let's stop and think for a minute. How could we ap apply logic to a jump the shark discussion? It's actually a lot easier, easier than you might think. And um, it might require a little research. So for me, a truly logical approach to a jump the shark question might have to do with ratings and the amount of viewers. Someone thinking logically would think, well, obviously this is the moment of the jump the shark because this is when ratings declined, right? This signaled a big ratings decline. Maybe it never recovered, right? That would be pretty good evidence that a jump the shark moment had happened. Or we could talk about things like, you know, defining and exploring the logic of the show in the first place. And maybe it was violated, right? Understanding the way that the show operates and then something that changed it is a way to do this. As long as we are not getting upset and as long as we're not, you know, um, indulging in, you know, making fun of and going crazy with criticisms, we're putting on the airs of a logical claim, right? So, Ratings would be very, very useful in this regard, in my opinion, if you wanted to think logically about a jump the shark moment. The second appeal is authority. Now, authority, and like I've said before, this is something we're going to rehash. We're going to come back to this later. When we start doing, when we start talking about politics, we're going to come back to argumentation. We're going to explore all the modes. So this stuff, I'm doing a very cursory introduction to these different modes. And this is going to come back. So, you know, write this down. But arguments of authority rely upon something that has, you know, like, what's the word? Like an entitled stance, right? So let me flip this on its head for a bit and get away from the realm of television. If we're looking for the jump the shark moment of the Roman Empire, we might look and see what a historian says, right? The historian is someone that we would think of to have the authority to have the opinion that we would value. So maybe it's the um, the invasion of Hannibal. Maybe it's the uh, maybe it's Caesar. The assassination of Caesar might signal that you know that not decline, but you know that moment where it turned to decay. Um, or, you know, we might put it as late as the sacking of Rome, right? So, but the main thing is, is that we look for the person who has the opinion that we take as gospel. That is authority. Now, these different appeals have strengths and weaknesses. So now that I'm actually kind of talking about authority, in what way do we invest the authority to say that I believe what this person says more than what another person says? By what metric do we actually, you know, give someone the ability to, you know, influence our opinions so much, right? So that's something to kind of think about when we indulge in authority. Now, the last one might be the most useful and um, the most fun is emotion. Now, I told, as I said, that logic wants to avoid emotion, right? But emotion itself can be a very argumentative thing. If I'm trying to convince someone that the volcano has exploded and we should run, I'm going to be like, ah, all right. I'm going to be like, I am on fire. Do you want to be on fire? No. You want to be on fire? It sucks, right? That's a very, I guess there's a little bit of logic coming in there. But, you know, and when you appeal to someone's baser emotional instinct, you do something very, you know, very primal, something that people are very influenced by. So how do we apply emotion to a jump the shark thing? Well, on that personal jump the shark basis, emo I react, um, again, I need to stop talking about my damn self, but there's been several highly, highly emotional points in my life that for me could be jump the shark because they changed my life, right? Whether it be the death of my father my hospitalization, uh, 
I really hope my wife never watches this video, but I could see some, <laughs> I could see some jump the shark moments coming from marriage, uh, from the birth of, I have not been a very productive member of society since my first child was born. That might be my jump the shark moment was when my kid, my first kid was born. Love you, bub. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> those highly charged emotional moments for me are very jump the sharky. Um, I promised myself I wouldn't talk about Star Wars, but I'm going to talk about Star Wars. People get people get angry <laughs> about Star Wars. I've ended a few friendships over Star Wars. I totally have. Um, sometimes you might be able to just like make a good argument for jumping the shark just based upon the fact that Star Wars did something that you find so angering, right? I was angry at it for doing something. Like, all right, I'm sorry, y'all. There is a moment in Empire Strikes Back where the Millennium Falcon is flying. You got Star Destroyer chasing him. My hand is the Star Destroyer, right? It's like, and here's a little Millennium Falcon like, oh my God, we got to run away. I, I can't believe I'm actually doing hand puppets, but I used to, here we go. So here goes the Millennium Falcon. It's like, right? <laughs> oh my God, I'm an adult. <laughs> here comes the Millennium Falcon. Um, <laughs> So they're being chased by a Star Destroyer, right? And this Star Destroyer is barreling down upon the Millennium Falcon. Now, there's another Star Destroyer heading towards the Millennium Falcon from a different direction. So you got two Star Destroyers basically sandwiching the Millennium Falcon between the two of them. And Han Solo's like, I still got a few tricks up my sleeve. And he goes like, through <laughs> Times down. By the way, why does this Millennium Falcon have a handle? Like, <laughs> why? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm such a loser. So anyway, the Millennium Falcon just goes, shoom, just goes down. And what happens next is just the stupidest moment in Star Wars history. These two Star Destroyers who are chasing after this very tiny ship just straight up run into each other. Like, they run into each other and they, there's this whole scene where the um the officers are like take a face of action <laughs> and there's an alarm going off imagine for a minute that you've got like some drug cartel guys like on a speedboat in the middle of the ocean and you got like a freaking aircraft carrier chasing them right already this analogy is so stupid but it is essentially what happens to Star Wars. And there's another aircraft carrier coming to try to cut them off. And the, the, the drug cartel guys in the little speedboat are like, let's turn left. And these two aircraft carriers, these two American aircraft carriers just smash into each other. Just massive explosion on the middle of the ocean. All because these little dudes in the speedboat are like, we gotta get the marijuana. Like, it's so bad. It's so bad. Like, oh, that is almost, I love Empire Strikes Back, but that moment is just so laughably stupid that it's, every time I see the movie, I just, I have to pause it and just sort of like catch my breath. So, I just made, essentially, an emotional argument about why Empire Strikes Back might have a Star Wars jump the shark moment. And it all comes actually from hilarity, right? But it could come from disgust. It could come from the fact that the show did something awful or killed a character. or So these are all... Um... <laughs> this is a weird lecture, man. I'm sorry. I just... I am kind of proud that I was able to get the Millennium Falcon in a video for once. I'm, I'm very satisfied. So in any case, um, these are some of the ways that you can uh, use the argumentative appeals in order to make your jump the shark paper have a little more substance to it as you start looking at one moment to try to convince me that that is the jump the shark moment. So here's what we're going to do today. And this is going to be weird. Um, keeping in mind our due date for next Thursday. I want you guys to try on a paragraph. I want you to pick an argumentative mode. That's logic. Using common reason. Non-emotional. Looking at things calmly. Um, you know, it's funny. Logic can also include things like statistics and data. Right? That's also the ratings thing. Um, authority, which is a voice from outside that you would find authoritative, but 
what is authoritative right now. We can, if you want to, if you want to make um, video Bob and his um, review website and authority, you have the power to do that right now. This is not as, you know, formal an assignment as it could be. Um, or emotion, an emotional moment that you can look at and or an emotion that you have to try to convince me that this is your jump the shark moment. I want you to try this on for size for one paragraph right now. I'm thinking, try to get as close to 10 sentences as you can. 10 sentences in a paragraph is a really good overall model for your paper because that's what helps you fill up pages faster. So try it on for size. Um, we'll post this in the Jump the Shark forum just like we've been doing, okay? So I think that's all I have for today. I need to go and I need to have another cup of coffee or something, but just, God, that moment in Empire Strikes Back. Anyway, um, we'll keep writing and putting this thing together and uh, hope things are going well. Oh my gosh, I forgot. We have our... Uh, um, team sessions today. So we'll be running that at, for this group, it'll be, I think, I'll send an email, I'll follow up on it. Wednesdays, man. Y'all have a good rest of your day. Man, I completely forgot about that.